Tick Tock, Tick Tock. That's the name of the fastest growing social media app in the US and in the world. But it's also the sound of time running out to sell the US operations of that company. That's because the US president has issued an order that TikTok's US operations need to be sold to an American company or cease operations by this Sunday. In this edition of FinTech Friday, the China versus US tech trade war. What's next for cross-border FinTech? I'm Silvio Tavares here in San Francisco on September 18th, and this is FinTech Friday, brought to you by Cardlinks. It's great to be with you. It's not an understatement to say that the TikTok saga has become quite a cliffhanger, full of suspense. TikTok is owned by a Chinese company, ByteDance. In August, the President of the United States declared that the fastest growing social media app in the U.S., with over 100 million users, would need to be shut down or sold to an American company because of national security and data security concerns. Next, we learned that Microsoft was near a deal to buy TikTok. Microsoft, by the way, is a founding member of the Cardlinks Association. But in a twist of fate, we learned this week that Microsoft was out of the bidding And Oracle, its longtime software rival, had clinched a preliminary deal to acquire parts of TikTok's U.S. operations. Now, as interesting as this boardroom drama has been, what can we learn about the fintech industry from this unresolved trade dispute? It turns out that there's much we can glean. See, the U.S. and China are in a trade war. But increasingly, the most important facet of that war is a struggle over technology supremacy in the world. Currently, the U.S. leads the world in all things digital technology, including smartphones, search advertising, software, and social media. But in one tech sector, the U.S. is facing some unusually stiff competition from China. And that sector is fintech and mobile payments. Mobile financial services have grown dramatically in China, and one of its leading companies, Ant Financial, the holding company for China's leading mobile wallet, Alipay, is valued at over $250 billion. For comparison, the largest financial technology company in the U.S. is Visa, and their value is approximately $430 billion. But the funny thing is, in the world of fintech, unlike some other tech sectors, Collaboration across borders and across technology is actually quite vital for success. For example, Visa cards are actually accepted to be used in the Alipay wallet. So the question is, what comes next for cross-border fintech? Will China and the U.S. duke it out there also? Because if that's the case, it could have some significant impacts for cross-border commerce and cross-border collaboration in fintech. So to answer that question, we talked today with Bo Wang, the CEO and founder of UWorld. UWorld is a cross-border payments company that enables Chinese consumers to buy goods in the U.S. Now, Bo was born in China, but he now resides in the U.S., and the company has operations in both China and America. Good morning, Bo. How are you? Good to have you on the show again. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again, Silvio. Bo, as many of our listeners will recall, you are an expert in Chinese payments, particularly Alipay, WeChat Pay, and your platform, UWorld, really acts as a gateway for those technologies, enabling Chinese consumers to buy here in the U.S. Many of us and many tech companies around the world, we've been watching the whole TikTok saga unfold, and it looks like there's a winner for, for the TikTok assets in the U.S., But I think a question that many of us have is, do you think something similar to TikTok could happen for fintech companies, for platforms like WeChat Pay and Alipay doing business in the U.S.? Or could this happen like vice versa with companies like Visa and American Express in China? 
Well, it seems like anything could happen now under Trump's administration and the possible of another four years as a president. But similar things happened over a decade ago in China, but we really haven't seen trade relations this low in recent years. I, I really wouldn't be surprised if China revokes American Express, which they just got the authorization of issuing a card by themselves in China. And other cards like Visa Master will be revoked if the relationship continues to go bad, right? So I wouldn't be surprised. Wow. So you think it, it is possible. And in this trade environment, really anything could happen. Yep. And with the WeChat Pay relationship that's coming up on the 18th, we already seen banks that stopping working with WeChat selling payment money for them. So it's already being affected in a way. But Hopefully, in the next year or two, things will start changing and going to the better position from there. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the developments that we're seeing, and, you know, we've talked a lot about this at conferences over the past year, is these two sort of rival technology groups. On the one hand, there's the Apple, Facebooks, Googles of the world, U.S. technology companies. And then on the other hand, there are the Chinese juggernauts, WeChat Pay, Alipay, Alibaba Group, and they're on a different side. And maybe you throw in Huawei with that group as well. Do you think that these companies are going to basically force different markets around the world to choose between them? Or is there going to be more collaboration than we all expect? Because ultimately, that's probably in the best mutual interests of, of all of the companies and, and actually all of the markets. Well, in short term, because of the political environment, I see that will lean towards the one to, toward the other for each different countries. But I think on a longer scale, let's, we're talking about five years, a decade or two, I think overall it will gradually merge into each other as well. So I do see that on the payment side, a good combination between Visa and Master and Alipay because Alipay now you can bind your Visa card to Alipay wallet, uh, vice versa. So short term, in my goal, either way, long term, I see that merge. The TikTok development was definitely a surprise to many. Looking back at 2020, what do you think was the biggest development in cross-border payments besides the pandemic? What was the biggest surprise for you in cross-border payments in 2020? Well, 2020 definitely is a rough year for cross-border payments. Besides the, the scandal we recently heard about Wellcard, they're actually very cross-border in general. That In Europe, that potential fraud situation went bankrupted, but cross-border transaction volume went down dramatically because of COVID as well. But fortunately, though, in our case, your world has made a major move with Alipay on an official partnership which approves your solution as a new way to enable cross-border payments for them. That's out of the normal QR code or scanning or reverse QR code scanning. We take it as a pride by making a development over there, but also, Another major change that's really worth to look into is the global mobile banking. Companies around the world have started offering digital banking solutions with virtual accounts and virtual Visa and MasterCards for people all, and the businesses all over the world. That will unleash the next level of cross-border payments. And you know, cross-border payments have really been fueled by the trade corridors between China and the rest of the world. On the one hand, U.S. consumers have really benefited from being able to buy goods from Chinese manufacturers. But increasingly over the last several years, we've seen a lot more of the Chinese middle class buying goods from abroad, including luxury goods from the U.S. and Europe. What do you think is going to be the biggest new trend in cross-border shopping for 2021? High-end furniture is a great category to look into. High-end furniture category has grown very fast in China for the past couple of years. And COVID made this the hottest growing category for 2020. So the majority of high-end larger furniture is actually coming from European countries. Some of them are coming from the U.S. as well. So I do see there will be a luxury furniture platform that will rise to serve the Chinese market. So that's a, definitely a good market to look into. And also in general, so for, for the past couple of years, service 
similar to Build Me Later, installment payments for purchasing goods has gone really well in China. That hasn't happened for cross-border shopping yet. I think that will change the way cross-border shopping as well in the next couple of years. Another technology and the way of selling worth to look into is cross-border live streaming and social selling are yet to come. So the growth of these technologies will definitely accelerated by the COVID, not shut down by the COVID. Can you share with me some more insights on you world and how you're actually helping merchants in the U.S. tap that cross-border demand from China? Sure. At UWorld, we first go through a quick evaluation process and find out how we can enable the merchant payments via their existing gift card distributors. And then we walk merchants through to the use case to show how it is very simple to be able to scan and input a gift card to accept that cross-border payments. And after that, we help on the marketing side by localizing the contents for for them and work along with Alipay and WeChat to launch its marketing campaign to their potential customers. So many merchants we work with have seen some incredible success from our special campaigns and tend to do multiple promotions throughout the year. So many of our users are Chinese living abroad who is in the normal time we would have friends and families visiting through China uh, to the rest of the world. But now they're personal shoppers for these friends and family abroad to help them shop to fill in that gap for inbound tourism. And, you know, politics to one side and the trade tensions to one side. Do you feel like there's still a significant demand from Chinese consumers for goods from the United States and, and also more broadly from Europe? Yes, we do see that. The cross-border shopping stopped a little mid-March, early April, but it actually came back. But we do see the trend has shifted a little bit. As I mentioned on Carlinx Asia conference just about a month ago, that the luxury items are still at high demand from the Chinese consumers because there are more and more high net worth families that are coming out of China. But also on, because of the economic shifts, the average spending ticket actually will drop. So the lower priced items and new trendy brands will be on the high demand for the next year as well. The sales of the middle tier brands might drop more. Very interesting. Well, Bo, thank you so much for sharing your, your insights. And we look forward to having you on the show again. Thanks for, for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Have a great one. Thanks, Bo. That's Bo Wang, the CEO and founder of UWorld. Coming right up, some closing thoughts on fintech and the trade war. For now, the U.S. is the world's largest economy, and China is in second place but getting bigger by the day. Which country ends up being number one in a decade from now, that could very much depend on which country gains the upper hand in technology, including in fintech. But there's also another way to look at the future. Instead of looking at it as a zero-sum game, an alternative way to look at the issue is to ask, how do you promote cross-border collaboration in industries like fintech that will actually benefit both the U.S. and China, as well as all trading nations across the world. As we've heard on today's show, numerous companies are scrambling to innovate and find the right products to answer that question. Whichever companies develop fintech products that serve this need first, they're going to find that the next decade will indeed be their time. For Fintech Friday from the Card Links Association, take care of yourself and take care of each other. God bless you. This is Silvio Tavares signing off. Hold up. 